could this be the last and final stream from prepared version 2.5? Looks like we're going to find out soon enough. I'll be staying up really late tonight to make sure I get my copy. Summer is almost over for many of us around the world, but luckily it is always summer in the Caribbean, which is where we're headed tonight to Aerosoft's Bonaire recently released. Should be a lot of fun. Always glad to have you guys on board. And we are getting started right now. Stand by. Hello everybody and welcome back to another live stream. Uh, it's been a while since we kicked off with uh, San Francisco from Flight Beam. Man, I have been having an absolute ball with that scenery. It is amazing and if you have it, then you already know what I'm talking about. It is incredible. So as I mentioned shortly, just a few moments ago, uh, it looks like this could be the final stream in prepared version 2.5. Really, really excited about that. Before I get started, though, I want to make a quick sound test. I've been having some issues trying to get the sounds in the simulator just right. <laughs> so um, it's a little too quiet just listening to my voice and not having the actual sound of the aircraft. So I've made some adjustments. Hopefully things sound okay. And if they do, you guys can just give me a quick little heads up in the chat and just let me know if the sound is not too loud or if my voice is too loud or whatever the case is. Hopefully everything is running all right. You'll notice that we have started off in Aruba, and uh, there's actually a few little airports in this part of the Caribbean. Um, you have, um, and we're, we're going to see three of them today. Uh, the nearest mega airport um, that we will not see today is the Caracas scenery that was released by, I believe it was Latin VFR, and that was several years ago now. It might have been maybe six years ago. Five years ago, three years ago, I can't remember how long ago that was, that Venezuela, that Caracas scenery done by Latin VFR. And I actually wrote a review on that um, some time ago. Um, so we won't be seeing that one, but we will catch a couple of the tropical sim um, airport sceneries in the area. Um, I figured it'd probably be a good idea to kind of show, um, show off what else is around here. And please bear with me while I try to... <laughs> I thought I had Track IR up and running and... I guess I didn't because it's given me something of a hard time. Give me just a moment. And you probably have already noticed that uh, we are flying Alabeo's brand new Cessna Corvallis. It is a lovely airplane. I really, really enjoy this airplane and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, the only downside is, um, of course, it uses the, the differential braking. And the differential braking in this airplane is a real pain in the ass when it comes to trying to turn corners. I've I have been having some <laughs> some a difficult time trying to trying to turn corners in this airplane using the differential braking. And no matter how lightly I I tap the toe brakes, I mean it just dips. Like you see these how it's dipping here. And these are just light taps. This is a heavy tap. That's a heavy tap. So you can see. Just lightly tapping on this thing is really making it bounce, and um, it's not very easy to, to turn corners with it. So um, I think they released an update already for this thing, if I'm not mistaken. I can't quite remember, but um, yeah, the, the taxing is just a little bit tough um, in this airplane as I try to get us on the center line. Um, as far as this lovely uh, Arena Beatrix Airport, I actually wrote a review on this one as well when it first came out. Many, 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 many moons ago. So um, it is up on the Air Daily X website, and I have overhauled all of the reviews pages. All of the reviews pages have been completely overhauled, so hopefully things are easier to find now and uh, easier to see. So this is a review that I did a very, very long time ago. So if you're looking for more airports in the area, um, certainly this live stream gives you an idea of what else is out there. But uh, then there is the written review, which should give you a little bit more information as well. Um, so I don't see any um, comments on the sound. So I guess that means everyone can hear me okay. 
which is a good thing. Yeah, it looks looks like that's okay. All right. I guess I'll uh, climb out behind these two 757s here on the way out. Take a look at our lovely airplane. So you can see here, this is this is really the big thing with this airplane so far for me is um, just trying to get it to taxi and just little taps, little taps, just really, really, you know, bounce the thing forward. And I'm not sure if that's how it is in real life or not. I think um, Coronado's... Um, uh, what is that? The SR-22 GTSX, I think, actually taxis a little bit better than this. And the SR-22 GTSX and uh, and the, um, the the Corvallis that you see here, the Corvallis was actually based... Oh, did I miss my turn off? I did. Oops. I'll just turn here. Um, the Corvallis is actually based off of the old Columbia. But both the Columbia and the SR-22 was originally a, a project that was headed by NASA and uh, I don't have the full story but basically both aircraft were based on um, based on an old Lance Air um, design so I mean if you look at the Cirrus and you look at the Corvallis here or the Columbia you'll notice it almost looks like a like a Lance Air with the exception of the fixed landing gear and actually some of those early Lance Airs had fixed landing gears as well but it has that sleek Lance Air look to it. So they were both kind of based on that initial design. And uh, Cessna, it's kind of weird calling this a Cessna because it doesn't look like your typical Cessna, does it? It certainly doesn't. But um, I think if I were to buy an aircraft of this size, I think this is what I would want to go with. It's got lots of power. It's really fast. Um, you've got a fixed gear so you don't have to worry about gear failures and stuff like that. It's got a high cruise altitude. Um, and in the simulator, it's a lot of fun once you get it off the ground. But like I said, taxiing can be something of a, of a pain in the butt every now and then. So in route to Bonaire today, we're going we're gonna to make a brief stopover at... Uh, oh, doggone it. What's the name of that island? Um... Is it? I don't. I don't even know how to pronounce it right. Is it Caraco or something like that? I don't know. You guys could probably help me pronounce it properly. But uh, there's another island there that was um, a new version actually released by Tropical Sim. I think that was last year. And uh, so we'll do a quick hop over to that one and then make our way out. I think total the total distance between this airport and Bonaire is something like 111 miles. So. Um, not a whole lot of flying today, but I thought it would be cool to show off what else is out there, especially considering the fact that uh, the scenery that we're featuring today is so small, this stream would basically be over in probably 15 minutes. Um, I did take an early look myself at the Bonaire scenery, and I gotta say, um, Yo Erland, and I know I'm probably always pronouncing his name wrong or incorrectly, but this guy is just an amazing developer, and he has done an incredible job, and um, I can tell you already in advance, there's only really one or two things that um, I feel the scenery lacks, and with the exception of that, it's it's 4.5 out of 5 stars um, in my little my little personal notebook. Really, really uh, job well done, and um, I'm really kind of hoping that um, that he sticks around uh, and does uh, and updates a lot of these other Caribbean islands. Um, you know, Tropical Sim has done you know quite a few islands out there as well as Latin VFR, but I think a lot of those islands are starting to fall out of date. And uh, I can't think of anyone better to go in and attack all those islands. I don't know how much longer uh, this developer will be staying in this part of the world. As we all know, he's well known for his uh, Norwegian sceneries. And uh, he gave us quite a shock with Daytona earlier this year. And uh, then another shock. So he's, uh, he's sort of strayed away a bit from, from Norway. And uh, I think a lot of people are really, really excited about that. Um, I'm both excited and saddened if you will because um the the last great norwegian airport that i'd like to see him do or redo would be the trondheim varns i would definitely like to see him re redo that um this other team kdm scenery design that uh, did oslo torp and just recently released uh the other scenery uh Sval Sval here we go Svalsbard, I, I don't even know if I can even pronounce that, long year. And uh, I'll also be doing a, uh, a live preview on that one. That airport might actually debut in prepared version uh, 
as I said earlier, this this may be the last final uh, stream in uh, version 2.5. So that Svalzbard, uh, and if I'm pronouncing it right, Long Gear will probably be in the new version of Prepared. And uh, I will be definitely uh, conducting a live stream of that. Um, but yeah, KDM Scenery Design, they're, they're tackling Norway as well. So I'm very interested to see what other airports they might deliver in the future. And um, if you caught the live stream of uh, the Oslo Torp, which I did uh, as well, um, it's an incredible job uh, for the first time for this KDM Entertainment. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what else they deliver. As far as the quality based on the screenshots goes, I have the scenery, but I haven't looked at it on my own yet. So I'm really, really excited to see um, just how far uh, the scenery quality has gone over their first attempt. So, um, and Yo Erland has worked with them as well. So it's glad to see those two developers working together. Before we uh, take off, just take a quick look. And uh, see if there's any questions. Um, yeah, I did turn off the links, guys, um, for the chat. I think there was some issues before um, with folks posting some crazy links. So, um, yeah, the, the links are off. But, um, yeah, we have to be make sure we're careful. We don't, wanna, we don't want any trolls to come in and give anyone any viruses. But all of the admins, of course, can still post links. Nice little crosswind here as we depart. And uh, certainly a busy terminal down there today as well. Looks like, um, and prepared, it looks like there's some uh, terrain issues there. I don't know, those hills look a little bit, look a little oddish. I don't know what that white stuff is going on, on on those hills down there, but this is definitely a uh, an old tropical sim favorite for me. And if you caught the stream as well, Tropical Swim Swim, Tropical Sim also released Martinique um, earlier this year as well. Was it last year or earlier this year? I have to try to remember. I can't remember if it was last year or earlier this year, but they also released Martinique um, some time back as well. Quality. Quality wise, it's okay. Um, you know, back in FS9, I was a big fan of the old Latin VFR, not Latin VFR, the old French VFR, VFR France or France VFR, one or the other. They had done those islands back in FS9, and those were awesome sceneries for FS9 if you had them. And they also, it also included um, several airports, including Martinique as well. So I was really happy to finally get an updated version for FSX, but. I found that the quality sort of paled in comparison to the work that Taxi to Gate has been delivering in the Caribbean, and I, I certainly hope that Taxi to Gate is still planning to deliver more Caribbean airports, but um, when you take off from one of the, the Taxi to Gate Caribbean airports um, and then you land at the, uh, the Tropics of Mar Martinique, there is a, a very noticeable uh, quality uh, difference between the two. So a part of me, believe it or not, still hopes Taxi to Gate decides to go back and tackle that airport. As far as photo reel coverage goes, covering the surrounding areas, neither one of them gets it just right. Um, so sometimes perhaps it's best to just do the airport on its own and, you know, maybe wait for FTX to come along someday and do it. Not really sure. You can see with this scenery, though, the um, it's got a fairly large photo reel coverage area, but it's very abrupt once you leave FTX Global. And, um, you know, it's very, very brown type scenery. This one looks actually pretty good. And uh, as it pertains to uh, Bonaire, the airport that we're en route to today, um, that was really my only gripe, was that the, the island that it's on is so small, I just couldn't come up with any reason of, um, you know, why not just go on ahead and do the whole island. And in that case, he didn't do the entire island. He just sort of 
um, did the air, the area surrounding the airport, and I thought I found that to be a bit lacking, especially since the island was so small. Why not make it a whole island adventure instead of just the airport? You can see here our little Corvallis has some very nice climb performance. Very powerful, fun little airplane. Bear with me, I'm just going to adjust a couple of settings really quickly. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm going to try to multitask. Hopefully I don't crash a little airplane while I try to do that. Let's see, let's, um, uh, let's keep the altitude at 4,000. I don't want to get lost up here in the clouds. We just go back down to 4,000. All right, so uh, as I try to get us leveled out here, and then I'll uh, head back and take a look at some of your comments while we settle in for this nice little flight. En route to Curacao. Is that, how do you pronounce that? It's like C-U-R-A-C-A-O, but then there's like this little squiggly thing underneath it, right? Something like that? I don't know how you pronounce that. Just scrolling through some of the comments here. See, there's a lot of excitement about the upcoming um, DCS. Finally got DCS up and running, but here's a downside. For some reason, it is it's it's. I'm finding it to be a little bit daunting setting up all of my controls with DCS, and I know that the Thrustmaster Warthog is more or less kind of designed to work with DCS, especially with the A-10 Warthog add-on, which will probably be my first payware add-on for DCS, because that's one of my favorite airplanes. Um, but I'm finding that it's it's a little bit tasking to get everything set up um, with DCS. So I've, I haven't, you know, probably spent as much time with it as I uh, would have liked because of all the other things I have going on at the moment. So I will take some time to, to, uh, to work on it. But yeah, I found that... Um, it, it was not as simple as, say, like with FSX or even with FSU IPC to get all the controls binded. So, um, like, for example, certain switches on my Warthog that I might use for gear up and gear down, if that switch um, has a, uh, a multi-axis, um, then DCS will only recognize the switch going in one direction. FSU IPC has the same setup, except it will give you an option to say, what do you want to do when this switch is released? So, if I want to, if I want the switch, if it only recognizes the switch going in one direction, say for gear up, but it won't recognize gear down, you can put in an axis where when you release the switch, it will then do you know the reverse function that you can kind of assign to it. Um, but with DCS, I haven't found that functionality just yet, so um, still trying to figure out how to get that all worked out so I can finally do some flying. But I did um, do a little bit of flying, a little bit of playing around with it, and I really, really liked it. It's got some really cool flight dynamics. Haven't checked out any helicopters yet, but um, yeah, I really like it. It's a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to um, this uh, this Las Vegas pack coming out and uh, doing some multiplayer stuff and getting getting more and more into DCS as um, as I progress and. 
DCS will essentially be solely used um, for you know military combat type stuff, whereas all my civilian stuff will remain with prepared. Um, I've also been playing around a lot with um, that older version of uh, Aerofly FS, and uh, I got to tell you that uh, I, the, the the PC version is very good. I've been using the um, the the mobile version on my iPhone, and I've had that for several months and it's a lot of fun just to kind of fool around when you're bored and kind of have that itch to fly something uh, I think that sort of fits in quite well um, entertainment wise and the graphics and the quality of the scenery is actually really really good I mean um, you can't you know do things like adjust weather and all that stuff but I mean the quality of it it's really good and it's got nice shadows and stuff like that so um, it's not really all much different from the PC version, nothing in the um, virtual cockpit is clickable, so everything has to be binded to your control devices. Um, but ultimately, what I sort of took away from that is the uh, the, the real promise uh, that this team has. There's, there's a lot of promise, and um, as we know, they released a statement about uh, I want to say it was maybe two or three weeks ago uh, that they're finally getting close to releasing their new simulator which will start off including I think a section of Northern California and I think they've mentioned that they are planning to sort of expand beyond that and make it bigger so I'm really curious to see what they're going to do hopefully the uh, the, the virtual cockpit will have uh, clickable switches and, and will be fully interactive hopefully you'll have <clears throat> different weather scenarios um, the way that we would usually set up in, in flight simulator um, so on and so forth. So I'm really hoping that they're really going to turn this into a full-fledged simulator. But additionally, I'm also hoping that um, uh, they will open it up so third-party developers like Rex can come in and make it pretty. And maybe even Orbix might look at it and you know think, well, hey, maybe we could do an NCA sort of thing for this as well and plop in some airports and, and stuff like that. So uh, really helpful to see what they come up with. Hopefully, they'll it'll be fully autogened. Uh, obviously, I think they'll be going the route where Everything will be completely photo real, real <clears throat> which is fine. Um, but hopefully they will they will get autogen on top of that, and you know I think it it, it has a lot of promise. Um, so I'm really really excited to see what they might be working on in the future. So I decided to add that along with DCS um, and FSX and prepare to the uh, the official simulators that I use. Um, as far as FSX goes, I do use the Steam version. And that uh, for for products that are more or less exclusive for Steam, <clears throat> and uh, some of you might have caught the Orbix Friday Harbor scenery that was released a few weeks back, and uh, there was a uh, sort of an exclusive uh, pre-release review that came along with that, and uh, Jordan's awesome video of that, and that's an incredible scenery as well. And if you're counting down the days in terms of when that will make its way into FSX and prepared. December 15th so we've got over two months <laughs> to go before we finally get it uh, cringing and uh, speaking of Jordan 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 is here as well as Misha hanging around as well I've got to back up and take a look at some of the comments you can see our next uh, <clears throat> touch and go spot is uh, just arrived. You can see the island just coming into view there in the background. Oh, Ross says you can't really hear the aircraft. Okay, I think I can turn the aircraft up a little bit. Uh, let's see. I think I can maybe turn it up. Let me know if this is too loud. And uh, I can turn that back down again. I just don't want it to be too loud, and then everyone's like, "Ah, oh, we can't hear you." Let's see. That's like forty-seven percent for the simulator. Uh, let me scroll on up. See if I can catch up with some of these comments here. <clears throat> By the way, I went out. I went out to the um, Point Magoo Air Show this weekend. Oh my gosh! In fact, um, I think before I end the stream, maybe I'll show you some of the video I took. Oh my God! I sounded like a nerdy brat ass little kid 
um, <laughs> at this air show. I kid you not, the last time I've been to an air show was back in 1993 at the old Air Toro Air Base. They used to have an Air Toro Air Show back in the 90s, and um, Air Toro has since been, been shut down and has been closed for many, many years. Um, but, uh, yeah, they used to have an air show every year, and uh, the last time I've been to an air show, I kid you not, was 1993. And that's the first time I got to see the Blue Angels fly. And I just remember how amazing that was as a young, I don't know, what was I, 12 years old or 13? I, I can't remember how old I was. But I remember at the time just being, just how impressed and experiencing my first sonic boom, which was just in freaking sane. So I was really, really happy to head out to uh, Point Magoo. And it's funny because back in 2001, Back when I was working for FedEx, <clears throat> FedEx used to actually sponsor the air show, and they would bring out like a you know a 727 and an A300 or something like that, just to show off and help sponsor the event because it is free, um, you know. And so you know the sponsors kind of help make all those things happen. Uh, but uh, I was due to uh, I was a volunteer as an employee of FedEx to show off the 727, give people tours of the flight deck and all that stuff. And on uh, that was my job on Sunday, and on that Saturday, the day before, there was actually a um, I forgot what jet that was, but a, uh, an aircraft had actually crashed, and uh, the video's up on YouTube. You see the guy ejecting from the cockpit just seconds before the aircraft hit the ground, and unfortunately, um, he just flew right back into the fire and uh, was killed, unfortunately. He flew right back into the explosion from the ejection, so they canceled the show, and I haven't been to an air show so in a long time, so... Um, they had the uh, the Breitling, what is it, the, the Switch Watch Company, it's Swiss Watches, Breitling or Bretling or whatever. Uh, they had the L40, what is it, the L49 Albatrosses out there, and that was really cute and fun. Those planes are really quiet, and you know, but it was nice to see that. They had the Oracle team out there, and they had the Bearcat. Oh, my God, I love the sound of that fucking Bearcat. That thing, every time it flies by, it's just like you can feel the bass like in your bones, like your bones rattling. Every time that thing flies over and it's just like, <laughs> I love the sound of that. So I definitely caught that on video several times. Um, so yeah, they had that. They had the P-51 Mustang flying around. And then they had a restored um, Japanese Mitsubishi Zero. And that was a lot of fun. So then they had some dog fights with the Zero chasing down the Bearcats and the P-51s. And then they come around and shoot down the Zero. And you see all the smoke coming out of the back. And that was a lot of fun to watch. That Bearcat, though, oh, my God. That engine just ah, makes you crap your pants. It's, it's really awesome. So, But then in the end, once the, uh, the Blue Angels got airborne, holy crap. And uh, it's funny because you see all these kids nowadays, you know, they've got the Blue Angels above their heads and they're just sitting around talking to each other and they've got their fingers in their ears. And I'm just thinking to myself, I guess with modern technology, you just can't impress kids anymore. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. But I, in the videos that I took, you can see there's a lot of kids. There's kids everywhere. And they're all plugging their ears. And I'm like, why on earth would you plug your ears just because, you know, <laughs> you know, five or six F-18s are flying, you know, 500 feet above your head. That's no reason to cover your ears. You want to hear that. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. So anyway, in the videos, you just hear me going crazy every time these guys do something crazy. So that was my Sunday. Loads and loads of fun uh, watching the Blue Angels and, uh, you know, seeing that, that level of skill and discipline uh, kind of makes you proud. Sorry, I was I was kind of a segue, wasn't it? Still trying to work my way up here. Twitch has finally gotten to that point where I can't scroll to the very beginning of the chat anymore. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the aircraft I was flying around in DCS was that Russian aircraft. I guess that's the Su-25. Um, the graphics and flight dynamics are really good. A lot of fun. <laughs> Let's see. It looks like uh, we've got the next airport sort of coming into view.
Is it Curacao? Is that how you pronounce it? And Rolio is saying it needs a new version. I know that... I think this was just released like last year or something like that or earlier this year. Um, it's... The, the modeling of the terminal is not bad. Um, well, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there and take a look at it. I, You know, it's... It's not bad, but there just there, there's there's a bit that I think could have been done better. And I know um, Tropical Sim released the uh, Kaz, ugh, sorry, Kansas City. Uh, I think it was day before yesterday, and uh, there was a lot of mix and varying opinions on that as well. And I think I saw that he's working on an update to the Kansas City as well, because I think a lot of people are really curious about that one. So I'll be getting into it and streaming it as soon as I have it. I'm just waiting for him to to, to get it updated before I do a stream. And Ross is going to take notes on questions. Ross, I haven't forgotten about you, by the way. Just, just FYI. Actually, I did, but then I just reminded myself. So, just bear with me after the stream. <laughs> Oh, somebody's, are you guys asking about the, uh, the, uh, the Corvallis here? Can you fly it with um, just like the default FS GPS? That's actually what I'm doing. Um, I'm not really, for the stream and all that, I'm not really taking the time to do any uh, G1000 programming or anything like that. I usually don't bother with that during streams. You know, I see guys like um, Frugal, and he's like, you know, he's really, really good at what he does. But the second he does something that's not exactly perfect to real world conditions, and then they just start ripping him a new a hole, and I just try to avoid all that by not even bothering, um, especially for live streams. So yeah, I am flying um, just using the default GPS. You, you heard the autopilot shut off there, and um, how I usually get around that is I use the remote flight apps that you can get on the App Store. And uh, that comes with everything. It comes with all of your gauges that you need. Um, it's actually a bunch of different apps, but it comes with a bunch of gauges. Uh, it comes with your radio stack. It comes with a built-in autopilot. It comes with um, an actual GPS map. Um, a lot of different stuff. And I find that it's really, really helpful. So that's actually what I use, um, especially for stuff like this. Um, as far as this aircraft goes, you're not going to be able to find like a nav GPS switch or autopilot. Um, you really need to, to use the uh, the GPS properly um, to get this aircraft in one, one direction or other. But if you're lazy like me, and I tend to get lazy a lot, um, then I'll just use my external apps. Especially with Coronado and Alabeo stuff because, as we all know, um, they can't seem to get the G1000 Unix exactly right. So, um, you know, but I still love the airplanes. I still want to enjoy them. So that's one way that uh, I very haphazardly just sort of get out of it. <laughs> if you will but uh, yeah if you look on the um, the MFD there you can see that uh, I've, I've just got a route programmed in from flight simulator and that's that's good enough so as you can see we're now approaching Curacao hopefully I'm pronouncing that right and this is from tropical sim as well you can see that they've added some uh, photo real terrain coverage there By the way, guys, was the sound any better when I turned up the aircraft? Hopefully it was. I haven't really scrolled all the way down to the bottom yet. I'm still trying to keep up on comments before Twitch kicks them out. There's the airport coming in there on the right. A couple of KLMs down there. And got some of these classic bombers. They had these at the air show, too. They weren't flying, but they were... Uh, on static display. God forbid one engine goes out on one of those things and then you're just stuck with seven more. <laughs> so as it goes with Tropical Sim, one thing that I think they really need to do is uh, consider updating their uh, their tree libraries. I know sometimes they tend to use like default tree libraries um, from FSX, and 
I think it'd be nice to see these guys update their tree libraries. They definitely can enhance their sceneries a lot better, I think, if they decided to do that. This is going to be a funny third-party perspective landing. Just briefly taking a look at uh, the surrounding Tropical Sim airports. And like I said, Latin VFR also has uh, Caracas as well, which is very, very close nearby. It's not even, I think, what, maybe a 20-minute flight from here. And there is our airport. I think the quality of the airport is fine. I think really what it is is maybe the autogen, uh, the the vegetation, I should say, not autogen. Let me get out of this guy's way. I don't know if he just landed or is taken off or is he just getting in the way. Carasso, Curacao, Carasso. We'll take a quick taxi around and then we'll take off again. So, I mean, as far as the quality of the airport, I think it's fine. I tell you what could be done better, like these little areas, the grass areas maybe. I mean, it's not bad, um, but you'll, you'll see the difference. Once we get over to Bonaire, you'll see there's a, the, the, the difference is like literally night and day. Ah! The, the difference is night and day uh, in terms of like, you know, ground markings. But when you look at it from here, though, and I'll just kind of stop it really quickly, you can see the ground textures are not bad at all. So it's got some good ground textures, good ground markings. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily know if this needs a new version. I think I saw someone said that this needs a new version, but like I said, this version was released last year, I think for 2013, and um, it looks pretty good to me. Um, I think maybe, maybe it's a surrounding hillside. Maybe that could be a, a, um, like a, a more, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Higher quality photo reel, maybe. I don't know. And then the trees as well. Because I think these trees we're looking at are just Orbix trees. I think those Orbix HD trees. But, um, I mean, looking at the quality, it's not bad at all. I like it. I wonder if the Control J on the jet bridges work here. That's actually a good question. I don't know if Tropical Sim is doing that or not. taxi under this big KLM here. So I think it, I think it fits in quite fine um, with uh, with the other airports in this area. I don't I don't necessarily think it needs to be redone. There's just something about, and I, I really think it's just the trees. Maybe that's what it is that could just enhance it a little bit. But this is from Tropical Sim, and this is Curacao, if I'm pronouncing it right. So just a brief look at uh, one of the... We, we've gotten a brief look at two of the three islands in this little this little island chain here. In the, uh, in the South Caribbean. Uh, let's get underway. takes a minute for the airspeed to give me rudder control.
right, and we'll go ahead and watch her climb out while I try to catch up on the comments. Sorry about that. And uh, Jordan is uh, is also going to be working on a nice uh, prepared version three video for us. I guess he's going to do some uh, uh, comparisons between version two point five and three point zero because I think that's what people and I think that's really what we need is I think a lot of people are interested to see okay what are the biggest enhancements between two point five and three point zero to really justify you know the big two hundred dollar purchase. Um, as you guys all know, I tend to just stick with the academic version because, um, you know, it doesn't look, seem to me that um, Lockheed has really, really been, you know, it, you know, it's on the onus of the of the person buying it to, you know, determine if they think they're qualified for it or whatever the case is. But they haven't been really cracking down, and really, there's no way to really crack down. I mean, um, if you're going to sell something freely, I think on the internet, and if you impose a uh, a caveat on that then you would probably need to submit your credentials credentials prior to uh, being able to to purchase the item essentially so um, in something like an academic license if you're supposed to be in a student you know or a student in a course or something like that then you know you wouldn't be able to freely purchase it you'd have to be able to show okay you know here are my credentials uh, denoting uh, you know my position as a student or whatever or the hours on logging and then they say okay and then they you know qualify that and then they you know release the version to you or something which I don't think they have the time or the manpower to even bother um, so I, I don't know if there's going to be any method or form of cracking down on people that choose to buy the academic version or not I think um, I'll probably just go ahead and get the professional version because it, it's it's been kind of a I, I think when it comes to prepared it's it's the biggest thing has been confusion in terms of who gets what and if any of us are entitled to buy it at all, you know, and um, certainly the prepared development team are aware of us. Um, they have embraced us and um, uh, especially uh, the development community as well. In fact, it is really because of the development community that it that the product is being developed um, as much as it has because of the feedback and working closely with our third party developers. Um, so I think that's just sort of the best thing at all. But they are aware of our community, and um, they have embraced us. You know, we've done interviews with them, and they've done interviews with AFSIM and others, and so they know that we're out there. They know that we're using it, and and uh, I don't I don't think that they you know they have any any issue with that. Um, I think they're happy to have us on board. But you know, at the end of the day, it, it, they didn't buy it for us. I think we're just the the uh, the byproduct of it, but uh, from my understanding, they they use it for their own internal military use, and um, they do license it out to other military contractors and companies that need a sort of a a, a global simulator or simulation platform um, in order to simulate different things that they're working on. So you might have little mini submarine companies that might need to use it for their purposes or what what have you. So. I think the biggest issue or the biggest interesting thing about this version 3 coming out is this whole avatar thing which kind of reminds me almost like the <laughs> Microsoft Flight. Um, I think that's going to be really interesting because they have tried to make it clear that it's not a game and when you remember when they released version 1 they wanted even the, the, the user interface to be so completely separate from FSX so that they made it clear that this isn't a game. and. You know, they they now released the little people that you can walk around, and um, you know, I can only imagine that the reason why they chose to do that was probably because perhaps uh, some of the clients who purchase the licenses for their own use probably needed something like that. You know, I don't I don't think it's just our development uh, community that's working with Lockheed Martin. I think there are probably a lot of different companies and contractors and military contractors and private corporations that are probably using this platform. And they're probably working with Lockheed Martin as well and saying, hey, these are some of the things that we need for our uses as well to simulate our own, you know, products for our own internal needs. And, you know, one of the things perhaps someone probably requested was that you have the ability to walk around with a person. And when Lockheed implements that, they probably just, you know, they implement it across the board as opposed to that one, you know, that one uh, contractor or what have you. So I really don't know what the purpose is of including something like that. But 
I know for me it'll be very helpful when it comes to walking around and touring scenery. So um, I will go ahead and take it. But uh, certainly, I that that sort of caught me off guard and made me think, "Oh, that's that's weird." Uh. And I, I don't necessarily think that prepared is something that's supposed to be designed just as a flight simulator. I think it's supposed to be just a general simulation platform in general that could be used for simulating a lot of different things and not just flying. So. Perhaps that's kind of where they're going with this. So, I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. I'm still working my way down the comments. Sorry about that. I'm a bit slow. Um, Jordan said, time for the ban hammer. Uh-oh. All right. So, it looks like the audio balance is okay. Thanks, guys. Disgraced pilot says they just flew by Point Magoo. It was funny because we actually caught a uh, Qantas 747 um, that was flying just outside of the airspace of Point Magoo. And I wondered, as I saw that 747 flying overhead, if uh, the, the captain came on and said, Well, if you look down to your right, you'll notice the Blue Angels flying around down there. Imagine seeing something like that from the air, huh? So, really interesting. And Misha makes a valid point. He goes, OOMs would not be a problem for anyone if they use realistic settings for the simulation they were flying in. And, um, you know, it's funny that you say that, Misha, because in this particular case, flying out here over the water between these islands, I've got settings up really, really high. You, may have note you guys may have, not may have noticed. You've got the little boats flying around up there. The water settings are turned up to maximum, which, you know, if I'm flying, example, from Sedona to, um, uh, let's say... Um, veil you know um then i usually tend to just turn the water all the way off because i'm not really flying over any bodies of water big enough for me to even notice so it's no big deal but if i'm flying say into lake tahoe and you're approaching over the lake then you know you want to have the water settings on so i tend to adjust my uh my settings based on uh the kind of flying that i'm going to be doing so um and uh, when it comes to doing long haul stuff and larger tube aircraft i tend to turn settings way down and uh, when it comes to realism for example let's say you want to do a flight in the 777 from JFK to San Francisco you know the way I do it is is I just turn the settings way low but then I'll start off you know in the late afternoon so most of the flight is at night anyway you're not going to see those crappy blurry ground textures because you know you're mostly flying at night and things tend to look more realistic at night anyway so um, that's how I tend to tend to handle that Ross says he used to hear sonic booms every day in Southern California as a kid in the 60s. Well, I know that's a big reason why the Concorde ever visited LAX only once in its entire history back in the 70s and only visited LA once. And I think that was on an initial flight to see if, um, you know, the Concorde would operate to LA between LA and, I guess, New York. And uh, the people of LA didn't want it. They said the sound was too loud and uh, they didn't want to bother with it. So that's why the Concorde never operated to, uh, to LA. Because I think, I think there would have been a, a good demand flying up to London via New York on the Concorde. It's still faster than flying direct from L.A. to New York anyway, even with the one stop in New York. But, yeah, never happened. I hear, I hear a lot of stuff about uh, uh, trying to bring the Concorde back. I hope they do. You know, flights on the Concorde were not as expensive as I thought they were. I thought a flight on the Concorde probably cost like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, but... It wasn't anywhere near that. So I think probably nowadays people would, you know, average people might be able to afford that once in a lifetime ticket to fly on a Concorde. I know I sure as hell would save up for it. You bet. <laughs> Misha says, look at me talking about the younger generation like an old man. Well, seriously, because, I mean, if it ain't obvious by now, I'm really freaking crazy about aviation, you know. And as a kid, I mean, I used to, you don't see kids doing this anymore because they've got their iPads and their iPhones and all that stuff. But when I was a kid, I had a massive collect. I massed a huge collection of model airplanes. And flight simulation back when I was, you know, 8, 9, 10, you know, 11 years old, 
you know, flight simulation was grabbing that, you know, Ertl, ERTL, look it up on Google, ERTL, my old TWA 737 with the retractable landing gear. I don't remember what scale it was, but it was a 737-200, roughly the size of the Thrustmaster Warthog throttle, and it was all die-cast metal, really solid. And I used to pilot that thing around the backyard. Gear up, flaps up, and take off. You know, that was me as a kid. And um, you don't see kids doing that kind of stuff, hand-flying airplanes around the backyard. If anything, there's remote control airplanes that you can fly with your iPad. But um, it was just funny because going to an air show as a kid, I mean, who would ever think to cover your ears? Because uh, to, to me, it wasn't loud enough. It wasn't loud enough. Screw that. It was not loud enough. But I'll I'll um, I'll play a couple of videos um, at the end of the stream so you guys can see. You can hear me. I I sounded like a freaking nerd ass kid. Like I didn't realize I was making all that noise. Um, but then when I went back and watched the videos, I was like, "Who's that fucking idiot making all that noise?" And I realized, "Oh crap, that's me." <laughs> so um, I had no idea I was that excited. <laughs> But uh, I'll play a couple of videos for you guys so you can check them out. I, I was a kid. A lot of fun. But um, I don't know. A lot of the kids that were kind of around us didn't really seem all that impressed. So um, I guess that's just a new generation. I don't mean to sound like an old man. Um, but, uh, you know, big deal for me anyway. Just still making my way down the comments. You can see we have approached the scenery coverage area. And I'm just going to circle down. Now, one of the things I'm going to make clear immediately right off the bat is you can see the size of the photo reel. I'm just going to pan around the aircraft here. You can see the size of this island. It's not very big, and I'm not sure how much uh, he had to pay for the um, photo reel area covering the airport. But if he had to pay for it, then, you know, obviously it was probably very expensive. But, you know... And even this small, especially with this little extra little preserve area here, I would have liked to have just seen this whole thing covered in photo reel. Especially when you get out here to these areas out here, these little, um, I don't know, if you, what do you call them? Um, uh, what are they called? Um, like these little reefs or whatever out here. Um, this all should have been covered in photo reel. And you can see here, if you can follow the mouse arrow, if you can see it, you can just kind of see as I trace along the photo reel coverage area going around here and it really just surrounds the airport immediately um, as opposed to just maybe if anything cover that whole area out there I think would have been much nicer especially for the helicopter fans um, so that's really my gripe with the scenery is that's what it's missing is the photo reel coverage area unfortunately is just too small maybe he broke the bank when he did that huge coverage area from uh, uh, in Daytona but I'm in the coverage area of Daytona is like five times the size of this island area was covered. If you don't mind, I'm going to let the aircraft kind of just go into a pattern around the airfield here. Let you look at the scenery for a minute. Because um, I want to catch up on any other questions or comments. I know I try to make it, try to make it interactive um, before I uh, descend into the airport. And then we'll, I don't know, maybe we'll hop into it. I don't know. Is it necessary for a helicopter? I think I can just salute. The area is so small, I don't even think it's necessary for a helicopter. Of course, if he'd done the whole island, then I would have had an excuse to, to get the helicopter and tour the whole thing. Um, let's see. I see some very interesting conversations going on there. I'll, uh, I'll let you guys have at it. Uh, just uh, scrolling down here. Seeing some new names I haven't seen before. FS Productions, Disgrace Pilot. Welcome aboard to the stream, guys. Always love to see new names. I don't think I've seen Chemo before either, so uh, also make it a point to say hello to Chemo as well. Still scrolling almost to the bottom. Marlos B. I don't think I've seen him as well either, so welcome, Marlos. <clears throat> And 
Goose Milk 74. Um, Goose Milk 74 actually made a good point here, and then I think I hit the wrong button and I lost it. Hang on, where was that comment that he made? Uh, shoot, where did it go? Oh, Goose Milk 74 was saying, I was looking forward to improved multiplayer support for, for private servers. Um, and that's definitely a big deal. And um, I'm not, I haven't gotten into it much yet, but some of you may have recalled um, a while back I mentioned about getting uh, multiplayer servers for prepared. And that's something that's still in the works. Um, I don't really have much of an update on that yet. I think a lot of it was waiting to see what version 3 would do before getting the servers all together and then finding out at the last minute that, you know, there might be some kind of an issue or, you know, it might go away or something like that. But because um, right now you can really only kind of host your own server and try to bring other people on and it's not easy to do um, and a number of us have tried it open ports doing all this stuff and still couldn't get connected to each other so we are going to have um, dedicated server setup that you can just connect to for multiple multiple players and that's something that um, is in the works and when I have more information about that um, you know, I'll let you guys know. Um, I think it's something that's going to kind of be in conjunction between Jetline Systems and and uh, Digital Theme Park and Air Daily X. So we're 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 in the process of trying to get the multiplayer servers going, but um, it might still be a little bit ways off yet. But uh, nothing official to report, and that's why you really haven't seen anything um, on the news blog about it. There's I, there's really nothing to to really get into um, at this uh, juncture. Zuna is saying um, they probably make more money having a cheaper option for home pilots. What does that mean? And Misha, as a developer, um, well-known developer, I might add, is actually saying the thing he absolutely loves about Prepared is it actually gets updated. That's what I like about it. I mean, I know there's been a lot of complaints. If you go back and take a look at the release, um, the prepared release uh, post that I wrote, you see there's a lot of people that are unhappy. And I thought a lot of people would have been happy. Um, but a lot of people aren't so much talking about what it's bringing so much as I think a lot of people are just concerned that they have to purchase it again. And, you know, my, my position on that is I love this hobby so much that I, I, just, I have to have it. It's just like how people have to have the latest freaking iPhone or stupid iWatch or iPad or iPop or I kiss my ass. They have to have it. And when it comes to simulator, that's like the iPad thing for me or the iWatch for me is, is I'm going to go out and freaking buy it because I have to have it. You know, I need it. I can't live without it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the, you know, the dude that's going to, you know, even if a lot of people feel that it's really nothing more than a version 2.6 upgrade, I'm, I'm going to buy it because... You know, I have to have it. I just, I have to have it, you know. Um, I guess it gives you a little bit of something into the mind behind the person that keeps Air Daily X alive. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I have to have whatever the latest thing is for, for Flight Simulator. And, um, you know, um, like I mentioned before, Jordan, he, he'll be putting together some stuff. And, of course, I'll be doing some live streams with it. I'll be staying up late. I think I'll stay up at latest till probably 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning to try to get it. And if I can get it all set up, um, you know, by, you know, say 12 o'clock tomorrow, hopefully I can get a stream going tomorrow or something like that. Um, but, um, you know, look, I, I look forward to seeing what, J what, um, what, uh, uh, Jordan will put together because he might get a little bit more in depth than me, whereas I'll just be fooling around. Still scrolling. Sorry. I know you guys are ready to land here. Give me just a minute. So Misha's exams are over in five weeks, and he'll be ready to come out to California. We're going to swashbuckle. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Oh, Ross is so sweet. Says Air Daily X is the number one site. Yeah, I tried so hard with X-Plane. I really did. I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mean to be an asshole against X-Plane at all, and I respect the developers. You know, I wish that um, at FlightSimCon, I'm a little disappointed that, um, 
you know, all the guys ducked out so quickly after their seminar. I mean, they were there and then they were gone like in a snap of a finger and I never got to meet any of them or shake hands or interview them. And I was really hoping to, especially because the, uh, you know, the, the owner of the, of the whole setup was there. And, you know, I, I literally only got to glance at him once during the, the panel discussion and I was hoping to chat with him after, but they had come and gone so quickly that I didn't even get a chance to chat with him. I hope they come back next year. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, I really tried, but, you know, from what I understood in their seminar, and I wasn't able to, to, to attend the seminar because I was busy interviewing, but, um, you know, from what I understood is, is a lot of what people were concerned about the UI and stuff like that, they're planning on, you know, correcting in a new version. So I'm still keeping my eye on them. I just, I, I can't really do anything officially with it because, um, you know, it's, it's just like the AFS thing, um, the Aerofly FS. Uh, it has a lot of promise, but it falls short um, pretty pretty hard in the UI and stuff like seasonal textures and all that stuff. So uh, I, I do keep an eye on them and what's going on in that X-Plane world. And hopefully, just like with um, the Dovetail Simulator coming up, hopefully it's something that, that I'll be able to get into. Okay, so Rolio was saying that he read on the Aerosoft forums that it was a, there was a plan to cover the whole island, but the images were incredibly expensive. So, yeah, I, and that's, that's, I can understand that. I imagine that that was probably the reason. Um, I know that Photoreal is not easy. And, um, you know, I speak a lot with a lot of different developers. And there's one developer that I was chatting with. And there was a group of islands he wanted to do. And I won't say where, but there was a group of islands he wanted to do. And... Um, they were really small islands, very, very small islands. And um, I think for these three really small islands that are like not even a third of the size of the island we're flying over now, they wanted something like $5,000 or $6,000 for the photo reel coverage. And so that gives you an idea um, of how expensive it is. And this particular developer is one of those developers that's not going to settle for low quality resolution. This developer is actually well known for all of his products for, for putting in the highest possible quality available and Misha may know who I'm talking about but um, yeah it's just wow it gets up to three thousand six thousand dollars and it's like well the developers didn't have to calculate how many copies of the product they have to sell just to get back the investment before they can actually earn money on it so I mean I I totally understand it, it's it's understandable and obviously we'll take whatever we can get I still think though that this island would have been so much more if they covered this area here but, um, you know, or if the, at the very least, if Aerosoft could have been the one to maybe splurge on that money. I don't know how, how the whole relationship works in terms of who buys what. But, um, again, it's still a disappointment. But, again, we'll take what we can get. Misha said, I totally buy and I kiss my ass. <laughs> oh, man. Captain Gombo is here. Holy crap. What is it, like 3 o'clock in the morning in Germany right now? Whoa. And by the way, guys, I'm just going to break this news right now. So uh, Misha's going to fight some con. So uh, that's one developer you know who's going to be there. So uh, I hope to see a lot of you there um, showing up to the conference. It's going to be great. And Slayer says, DeAndre, we were in the hotel drinking bars with the x guys. You were standing right next to them. Oh, wait, in the hotel drinking beers. Did the, did the x guys show up to the, um, what, what did they call it? There's a word for it. They call it the, um, what did they call it? The, the FS, the get-together or whatever. I never saw them. Who are you, by the way, Slayer? You were there. Did I meet you? I did meet you, right? Do I, did I meet you and I just don't know what your moniker is on uh, Twitch? Could that be? It's weird because when we were at the social, that's what they call it. When we were at the social, okay, I'm going to start lining this up to land here. When we were at the social, um, I was actually chatting with one of the guys who used to be a big-time player at Absim back in the day, and he and I were chatting a bit. And, um, and then Frugal and his wife came over, and I chatted with them a little bit. And, um, oops, wait, let me see. Let me turn that off. There we go. And that, and that. Okay. Um, and then the uh, the gentleman from True Core Simulations came over and pulled me over and wanted to pick my brain a bit. So I wound up spending the entire social chatting with him and uh, I think maybe five other guys or six other guys. 
that kind of came over and started chatting with us. And um, so I didn't really get to work the room the way I would have liked, but I had no idea they were going to shut it down so quickly. I felt like I was only in that room for about an hour, and I felt like it was over. And I thought, you know, we were going to be in there for at least three or four hours for everyone to kind of work the room and get to know each other. And, you know, I only had one beer. I only literally had time to drink one beer, and I thought I would have at least had a couple of beers before, uh, you know, they kicked us out. But before I knew it, I looked up, and everyone had just taken off. And I know there was a dinner you know, and I, I didn't go to the dinner. We all headed out to this um, sports bar. That's where we were all hanging out at, at the sports bar. Uh, some of us and um, some of the guys from um, one of the ATC groups and Jetline, we all kind of headed out to uh, to the local sports bar and hung out there. But um, I guess maybe everyone left early to head over to the, to the, the dinner. Um, so um, I guess that's, maybe that's why I, I missed them. But, no, I, I didn't even know they were in the room. And, um, you know, I think I had I had known, I would have definitely made a chance to go over and talk to them. But I didn't even know. So thanks for bringing that to my uh, to my attention, Slayer. I, that's unfortunate. Oh, the dinner was lame. You know, I kind of had uh, a feeling the dinner was going to be lame. <laughs> the sports bar was fun. You know, it's funny. So here's what happened. So um, it was myself and a good friend of mine who was uh, one of the, you know, he's an executive for Gulfstream in Savannah. And he came, he came up to my wife and I, and he was like, you know, hey, what are you guys having for dinner? And we're like, we don't know where we're going to go. And I knew that uh, the Jetline Systems guys are going to head over to the sports bar. And we were trying to figure out where we're going to have dinner. So we just figured, well, you know what, let's just meet them. We'll just go over to the sports bar and we'll just hang out there. And um, Ed, I don't know if any of you guys saw Ed's presentation. He, um, he's a, he uh, works for Sky Roamers. He's an he's a instructor. He's an instructor for flight safety. And he's also a Gulfstream uh, G650 captain, and uh, he's actually been giving me some time in the uh, in the level D simulators, the Gulfstream level D simulators, and giving me some training. So I actually have logged multi-engine jet time <laughs> on Gulfstream aircraft, which is like insane because before that, it's just like a Piper Aero. So how do you go from that to that in your logbook, which is really stupid, but. Anyway, um, so he was there. So then we were all hanging out, and then all of a sudden, like another like 15 guys showed up, and um, you know they were just we were just like, hey, join our table. And before you knew it, we were just like 20, 30 guys deep <laughs> at the sports bar. So um, yeah, we were it was a lot of fun, and I think we might have stayed there till like two or three o'clock in the morning hanging out. So it was a lot of fun. So um, I think next year we'll probably just do the sports bar again instead of the actual dinner because. Um, I'm not even sure where that dinner even was, to be honest. I don't, I don't even know. But all I know is, is I knew that we weren't going to go to it. So <laughs> um, if you're coming next year, yeah, you definitely might just want to head straight out to the sports bar, which is like just down the street from the airport there. And uh, that's, that's where I'm going to be, um, knocking back a few and having some hot wings. So, um, but, yeah, it's unfortunate I, that I missed the X-Plane guys. I was really kind of hoping to – and, uh, you know, I don't really listen to the Aviator Cast podcast at all, but the um, Austin Meyer, I think that's his name, he, he did an interview on Aviator Cast a few months back, or actually a couple of months before the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the event, the convention, and um, just listening to him on the cast. He sounded like a nice guy, and he's definitely someone who's really passionate about flight simulation. And he has, actually, he has what is one of my favorite um, aircraft, the uh, the Lancer Evolution. That's one of my favorite kit aircraft of all of all time, and uh, he has one of those. And so I think it would have been nice to pick his brain. I didn't really get to chat at all with um, Robert Randanzo at all either, because after after the um, the the thing was over, they were in a hurry to get back to their plane and take off. So I unfortunately I, I missed them, um, but um, definitely a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot more developers. I can tell you unofficially, Amir from Flight Beam will be there. Um, George from Flight Tampa mentioned in passing that he's planning to be there as well. Matthias Koch mentioned to me in, in, a, uh, in a couple of emails that um, they're planning to um, have an Aerosoft booth, and he'll be there this time as well. Not sure if Winfried is coming back. Hopefully he will. But Matthias said that he's planning to attend next year and have a, a booth for Aerosoft and some stuff to sell and give away, um, as well as some others that I won't mention just yet. So I can tell you already just this early on, um, it's huge, but no one's registered yet because registration is not open yet, and registration may not open until probably January. Um, so there's really nothing to report in terms of registration. Um, but what it does do, and one of the reasons why I was hoping to announce something this early on, is so that everyone can just have time to purchase your tickets, plane tickets, hotel tickets, and try to get everything 
while it's dirt cheap. And as far as a hotel goes, there will be a special rate for the airport hotel there at Bradley, which is going to be um, really good as well. I'm actually doing some of my best taxiing skills with this airplane since I've had it so far. But you can see just barely tapping it how it just jerks forward like that. I really don't like that. Because I like to pretend like there's actual passengers in my airplane. So I feel like, you know, I'm making them un uncomfortable um, tapping the toes like that. But anyway. All right. We're finally on the ground. Making our way back to the main terminal. And then I think I'll just move the eye point forward and slew. Um, and uh, let me see. It was also Tropical Sim that did this airport initially as well. I believe it was for FS9 way back in the day. Um, so nice to see um, Yo Erlen coming through and, and putting his stank on it. Uh, <laughs> uh, putting his skills together um, in this part of the world is really, really nice to see. So um, really, really excited um, to finally kind of show off what he's done. Uh, heading back over to the virtual cockpit view here. couple of jets out there and I think we'll just pull right into the main terminal here that sounds like a good idea here we go tapping them toe brakes kind of hit that corner a little bit fast though ah boy I tell you this differential braking is not fun um, it's funny because um, the gentleman who's writing the review on this product for Air Daily X he actually doesn't have rudder pedals and so he actually had to go out and buy rudder pedals for the review um, so that he could do this, so he could taxi it around and give it a proper review. Look at those ground textures. Let me just stop that really quickly so you guys can look at those ground textures. Some really nice looking ground textures here. And there is some specular shine on those ground textures as well. Very nice. Flamingo Airport, and they're not joking either because look how pink this place is. I'll just pony on up next to this islander here. Never thought we'd see the day where uh, your island would have to create something that requires palm trees. There's no palm trees up in Norway. And here we are. Looking nice, looking very nice. Look at those ground textures. Very, very nice. Let's see if we can open up these doors here. I love the gold wings on this thing, by the way. This thing has a very SLS type feel to it with the gold wing doors. Very nice. Oh, what did I do here? What's this noise? Ah, uh, shoot, give me a second. It's going to keep making this noise over and over, and it's going to drive me crazy. Okay, good. That stopped it. That's... That's better. Um, besides our little airplane here, let's see. I think you have the uh, the baggage compartment door opens as well. There it is. Why am I above the ground? What's up with that? Is that just me? That's weird. And my airplane is like not on the ground. Okay. That's usually like an AVCAD problem. Maybe there's a double AVCAD in there somewhere or something like that. That's actually a good question. But my airplane is hovering above the ground. Hmm. That's odd. All right, let's go ahead and move the eye point forward. That might be an AFCAD issue. Rolio said, you're such a badass, Jordan. What is that in response to? I am missing the comments. All right, uh, let's see. So let's go ahead. Let's see. How's our frame rates? Our frame rates are, let me see, 38 looks like is the highest sitting here on the ground. And we're going to go to slew mode. And uh, take a look. So first thing that catches my eye here already is looking at these nice little animated flags. Which is very nice. Um, the ground textures are incredible. I am definitely loving the ground textures here. I can almost feel like I can walk there and kick up some dirt. 
She reminds me of uh, Orbic Stewart Airport um, in terms of ground texture quality there. Very nice. We've got uh, a little KLM container on the ground here. Look at these pink walls. Boy, I tell you, it doesn't get any pinker than this, huh? This is like Barbie's freaking airport. Look at this. And this is, this is a great example of attention to detail. You see these little things here on top of the wall? Now, I'm not sure if those are there for birds, to keep birds from landing and crapping all over the place, or if they're there to keep people from trying to hop, hop over the wall, but that's what I call attention to detail. Very, very nice, that is. And uh, I love the way that the entrance of the airport is done as well, and we're going to get all into that in a minute. Um, if you guys don't mind, if you give me just a quick minute, I am... my. Be, be, between my monitor and my computer, I am starting to sweat. <laughs> so I need to turn on my air conditioner and get a drink of water. So I'm just going to kind of pause here for just a second and uh, hit the air conditioner on and I'll be right back. Sorry about that. It like, seems even I need a break for myself. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I had to switch on the air conditioner. After a while, between the computer and this computer monitor, um, it can get really, really hot here. I have a little fan that's under my desk to keep me cool, but that just wasn't cutting it after a while. Uh, let's take a look at the parking lot. So you can see here a lot of um, custom Autogen here, hand-placed. We've got some billboards out here. Very nice. Port Bonaire. So it's obvious to me that uh, during his uh, training in Daytona, I guess maybe he decided he would just hop down to some of the islands or at least one island. And, um, you know, there's a part of me that's kind of hoping that he decided to hit more than one island. And the only way we'll know that for sure is if we see another Caribbean airport coming up soon. That's how we'll know that uh, this isn't the only island he visited. But uh, he's certainly done an excellent job just kind of randomly moving around and taking a look at some of these little areas outside of the airport here. Nice little dock there with some lights. Very lovely. In fact, um, let's turn on, let's get these waves. These waves are a little light, aren't they? Let's see here. Make a little bit of an adjustment to some of these waves here. Get some moderate waves going. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a little too much. That is way too much. Um, let's just keep it light, shall we? That's a little bit better. Add some waves there, make it look a little bit more realistic. Nicely done that. A little pier there. Might even write a review on this airport. Looks very nice. I'm in the process of writing my extensive written review for Flight Beams uh, San Francisco, so going to have to bear with me on that one. It is a big one. Here we have the fuel tanks sitting inside a little reservoir here. Lots of attention to detail. I remember when uh, Yo Erlen first came on my radar. This was many years back when he started developing the first version of Oslo. And I remember on FS Developer, 
when he started showing his very, very first screenshots, uh, I just remember being incredibly impressed and thinking to myself, holy crap, this is like FSDT type, you know, quality work here from this independent developer. You know, and just like with Mirror, Mirror, the same thing. I mean, he started, you know, showing off his initial works on FS Developer. It's a great website to follow um, to get an idea of who's coming into the community. So, yeah, I remember seeing the first shots of uh, Oslo, um, that first version. And, uh, well, let's see. They haven't updated their safety record here on that board, have they? And I remember it being just uh, just an incredible work. I was really, really impressed with the work that he did. So, um, after that, he went on. And, and mind you, back then, I wasn't even using FSX yet. I was a staunch FS9 user. Refused to go to FSX. Even to this day, I refuse to touch FSX boxed. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, um, I was just, I remember just being really impressed with, uh, with that first version of Oslo. So he went on to do a few more works, and then he came back with Oslo version 2. And uh, just when you thought he couldn't get any better, um, you know, he, he found a way to outdo himself and um, really did just an impressive job with that second version of Oslo. So it's nice to see, you know, what he's doing nowadays. And um, with each work that he does, it's just so obvious that he's getting better and better. Um, taking a look here at this little building here with the air conditioning unit sticking out with the rust coming off of it. I don't know if he was able to get direct access to this airport or if he had a contact that was able to get him these screenshots. But obviously, you can see here, he's had what appears to be just unlimited access to the airport. You know, even even down to the little sort of concrete designs here in the in the building. You can see how he's done that there. And, and to even make it look 3D, he's actually made it 3d so you can actually see inside you can see there's a little box there as opposed to just um sort of doing two-dimensional artwork on the wall he actually took the time to make that 3d you can see that so that just little things like that that just really shows how he's really with each work that he does he's taking more and more time to uh to make his works more immersed and we really just adding detail i mean it's really incredible even with this open door here same thing you can actually almost kind of peer inside. The building itself is hollow, but, um, you know, that easily could have just been two-dimensional. You know, same thing with these air conditioning vents that are sticking out here, but he really took his time to add all these things in. I mean, you look at these, uh, these little gates here walking into this area, how they're rusted over. You know, just little things like that that you probably wouldn't notice or pay attention to when you're flying in and out. Um, you can see where he's just really taking the time to do this. I mean, look at the ground here. Really, really. Oops, what did I do? Uh, I, just, just little things like that that you know I would look for um, <clears throat> that most pilots wouldn't bother with because you know it's obviously a good-looking airport from the cockpit, and that's all you need for most folks. But um, for me, I like to get down on my hands and knees and crawl under things and lift up things and see what's going on so you can see here this little hangar here and a little fence in there with some oil drums there or some flammable dangerous goods uh oil drums or whatever that is you know, you've got your belt loaders baggage carts um containers your ld3s as they are appropriately uh called ld3 containers and then we have a much larger hangar here. Nothing in there, though, but a good place to park should you choose to do so. And all the texturing work here, by the way, is just really well done as well. Very nicely done with uh, all the texture work here. You have a FOD container there. Foreign object debris is what that stands for. And a nice uh, entry fence here with a guard gate. I mean, you can just see here in all these little areas, um, separating the road from the from the footpaths, as they would say in Australia, or the sidewalks, as we would say it. Um, <laughs> you know, you can definitely see the differences between the two. And. Um, Really curious about Misha's opinion here. I know Misha's tuning in as well, and this is kind of the size airports that Misha's been doing, sort of these regional size airports. There's a nice little static uh, Cessna there. And here's an interesting way to create your own little hangar. Just get two uh, containers and put a roof over them. That's one way to do it. 
the the ground textures though are just killing me. I mean, look at these ground textures. Incredible. Look at that. Certainly a lot of attention done here on the ground textures. I mean, you can even see there and the the, the grass is kind of dying and <laughs> very nicely done. And you have your little volumetric grass here as well. Lots of little uh, ground support equipment here, baggage carts, tow bars. Um, you've got these pallets here. I'm not sure what that is sitting on top of these little pallets, but here's another little makeshift garage between two containers. So he's obviously gotten uh, access to the airport. Either himself or a friend. You know, I'm not sure how difficult it is to get airport access in areas down here in the Car in the Caribbean, but um, he certainly got a lot of access here. These are some very nice looking fire trucks there. And you can actually see the glass in the windows. One of the things I've been pointing out about Latin VFR and the fire trucks is um, I've mentioned that they're some of the best fire trucks I've seen in Flight Simulator, but you can't see the glass on the fire truck, so it just looks like there's no glass, even though he uh, modeled the insides, but you can't really see that there's glass there. So, <laughs> um, very nice looking fire trucks here. And here we have this little office here for the fire station. So, flying inbound, one of the, I mentioned that there were two things that I felt could have been done better with this airport. One of the things was um, definitely a larger photo reel coverage area, which as someone mentioned here in the chat, that uh, it's very expensive to cover the entire island, so they uh, they deemed not to do it, and fair enough, because there's no way to tell how much a, an airport of this size might sell, so fair enough. But the other thing that I wanted to point out was people. Um, and unless this came with a, um, you know what, maybe I should check to see before I shoot off my mouth. What is this config tool for? Holy crap. Ah. Sh well, well, no, 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 I'm still good. I'm still good. Hang on. I'm going to switch over to, uh, my desktop mode here because I just found it. So this is the, the configuration tool. The configuration tool lets you adjust certain settings in the scenery. Experiment and find out what works best for you. So you see here you have the uh, the model details. And everything has already been by default set to high. So we're actually seeing everything. And I usually check stuff like this before I start the simulator. And it just dawned on me that there might be a configuration tool. But what I was going to say, what I found it was missing was people flow. Like, you know, animated people or static people. Um, it looks very empty, and I know that with Oslo, he had people, I think, in the terminals, um, but I'm not seeing any people here, and that was the only other thing besides the photo reel that I found was missing, but uh, you have model details, which is set to ultra, so depending on the type of system you have, um, you can really make custom adjustments. Now, it says animations, which I'm assuming are like those custom flags. I think I saw an animation on top of the control tower. There it is. So uh, you have that light there. I'm not sure what other animations are in the scenery for us to find. The building textures are set to ultra. Ground textures, which I'm really impressed with. The specular map quality, which we kind of saw a little bit on the ground here. And when the sun sets, I think we'll be able to see it a little bit more, as well as the ambient occlusion. Um, and you see that stuff um, on the like the terminal windows and stuff, the uh, specular maps and ambient occlusion. Uh, night textures are set to ultra, which we will see shortly, as well as the map quality, um, which is uh, pretty high quality stuff. So very well done. So make sure you take a moment and you know adjust what works best for you in this configuration tool. Brought to you by Aeros. Okay, so anyway, um, that is the configuration tool. And uh, let's go back into into the scenery and uh, you know the ground equipment is very nice and you can see here he's created all new ground objects I think for the scenery because um, I don't think I've seen these particular trucks um, fire trucks and these um, sort of airfield vehicles in any of his previous scenery so it looks like he's done a lot of this stuff from scratch for the scenery very interesting to see the the contrast between the yellow trucks 
and the pink buildings. Makes you kind of think, why didn't they just do them all pink, huh? And that's some interesting contrast, the pink buildings with the blue doors. Every time I think of uh, flamingos, the first thing that comes to mind is the opening scene from Miami Vice. <laughs> My favorite uh, 80s show as a kid. As an 80s kid, I loved Miami Vice. Crockett and Tubbs. There is the uh, airport sign. And actually, uh, just taking a look at the sidewalk here. I mean, look at that. Just little stuff like that. Look at the uh, sort of, you have the brick here. And then this little area that separates the pavement from the tarmac. I mean, just little things like that. Even the letterings on the uh, the airport sign are 3D. And not only are they 3D, but you can even see the little bolt action where it's kind of attached to the sign there. If I can get behind there, can you kind of see right in here? You actually see the screws and where the letters are bolted to the uh, to the concrete uh, wall there. So uh, just <laughs> little details like that. Very nicely done. Now, nothing here is transparent in terms of glass, so I don't know how big of a deal I would have made out of that, but um, you can't really see through any glass. So unlike Oslo, which had all transparent windows, or at least mostly transparent windows, he didn't really do that here, unfortunately, but I don't really know that that's a big deal. And I have asked uh, Yo Erlen to come on and do an interview with us, but he hasn't replied to me. Uh, we do email back and forth from time to time, and um, but uh, he hasn't replied on coming on and doing a live interview just yet. So hopefully sometime in the future we'll be able to hear from him directly and get some insight from him. I think that would be a real treat for the community. Look at that, even a little padlock there on, the, uh, on this little enclosure. I mean, look at this, these like little things, like look at the vegetation, these little air conditioning units. I mean, that is just freaking real, isn't it? A little rock in there in the corner. And I bet you if I pull up Google Earth, you think we'll find this rock? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we actually find this freaking little rock. Let's see if he just put that there or if the satellite captured it. I'm just curious. By the way, this little area here, this Los Roquez... There was a developer that did this island, this this whole like national park island chain, and there's a little airfield there as well um, on Grand Roquet. That someone did that for FS9, and I don't remember who did it. I know I bought it like ten years ago, and it was a really really good scenery. This whole area is beautiful to fly over. So I'm hoping that someone will consider doing this in the future. There's a nice little airport in here somewhere. Well, there it is there. It's small. It's not much to see. Just It's not even an airfield, airport, really. It's just an airfield, but a nice little entry area here going into the airport, which is, um, I guess I imagine this is your way into uh, the customs area. <clears throat> Got some benches there. Welcome to Bonaire. Bienvenido a Bonaire. And Bombini na Bonaire. I don't know. That's I guess maybe that's a local dialect. Um, see here you have these little plants here. And here is our little immigration counter. Or a customs counter, I should say. Um, resident car. Oh, non-residence cards. Please wait behind the line. And something there written on the on the glass booth there. So it looks like there's like, what, eight positions there. Other passports. Dutch passports, as we know, this is a Dutch. Oh, I guess that'd be written in Dutch, huh? Duh, stupid. <laughs> um, then you pass through and collect your luggage. And even the luggage belt, if you look through, you can actually see through the other side of the wall. So the whole luggage belt. Is actually there. You can actually kind of see through these little flaps here on the other side of the luggage belt. Nice tile on the floor and seating areas. Little uh, bulletin board there looks like with advertisements perhaps. 
And you have these cool little windsurfing uh, things, <laughs> whatever they're called. I don't know where the exit is, though. How do you get out of here? Where's the exit? Once you, well, I guess you once you you collect your bags, and then you're just stuck in here forever. There's no there's no exit. <laughs> so where's the exit? Yeah, there's no there's like no exit. There's a door there, but I'm sure that's for immigration guys. So I'm guessing the exit is probably like right here. Maybe you walk through this somehow. Yeah, you walk through that, but there's no discernible door that I can find. But I guess you walk through here. And you declare your fruit and then get arrested. There's a security booth. And then I guess you kind of walk out on this side. Zoom out a little bit. And here you are. Very nice. So you have some nice chairs. Maybe this is a little restaurant or something like that. Looks like an information booth. There are no people here. You know, you could have put a little information, a person in the information booth. You could have put some people. Um, even if they're just static in those little immigration boxes that we saw when we entered in. Would have been nice. You could have had some people sitting in the chairs. <clears throat> I guess Orbix has spoiled me a lot with people flow because now I get to the point where it's like when I don't see it, I almost miss it. You know, here we have like a little information booth there. You could have had some people there. <clears throat> you have some nice stairs leading up to this second, this little second uh, story area. And then we have the ticket counters. You have Delta there and American Eagle. KLM. And a big poster here on the wall. And this is on the way to the Departures Lounge, which uh, was not modeled. So we cannot walk all the way through to the Departures. I think that would have been fun if he did make it that way. But uh, unfortunately not. So you can't walk all the way through on that end. But at least on the arrivals, he did include that part, which I thought was really cool. And here you look at the quality of these these rocks, the sign. Very nice. We got our animated flags there again. It looks like another entry door here. What is this? Does this go anywhere? No, that doesn't go anywhere. Another another entryway into nowhere. And here we have a very nice looking parking lot. Very nice looking parking lot. And uh, we have some nice digital shrubbery and I know there's a lot of comments there so we're gonna get back to the comments all the cars are the same though you have this little looks like an Audi SUV there's a Volkswagen there so a lot of German vehicles and uh, let's go ahead and switch over to dusk and while I do that I'll try to catch up on some of the comments and uh, let's do this the right way. Uh, we'll just go to time and season and switch that over to dusk and wait for that to load. And uh, just bear with me while I try to look at that beautiful night lighting as I try to catch up on some of the comments here. Sorry about that. Captain Gombo says, being a moderator in the chat isn't easy. Is somebody acting out? Jordan says he's hacked the neighbor's cable to get into this live stream. <laughs> you know, everyone's asking me should I make custom avatars for version three? <laughs> Slayer says some nice bump maps on the ground. Really was happy to see the, the Dutch flag flying around there. Rolio says I'm freezing and he needs an AC. Yeah, this is California, dude. It's I think even though I live near the beach, I'm only like a quarter mile from the beach, but 
Um, and it's usually a little bit cooler here than it is for the rest of the city. But even over here, I think today it was like 83 degrees or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Not much of a uh, not much of a breeze rolling off the ocean today. Captain Gombo said he bought SFO yesterday, and it's awesome. Totally kick ass. Captain Gumbo says, since the Andrew didn't notice my superb plan, new deal for Rolio and me. Instead of 29 palms, you pay for our tickets to the U.S. and we can drink a beer. Yeah. You guys must think I'm rich, huh? <laughs> Rolio says, if you told me this was Somalia, I would have believed it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Misha has taken off already, but he seemed quite impressed with the work here as well. So always interested to hear one developer's uh, thoughts of another developer's work. I think um, that's always a very good thing to see. Ooh, looks like you guys are working. Holy crap, the trolls have shown up. <laughs> All right, Rolio is starting to turn into a troll himself if he keeps talking about coming here and me buying plane tickets. All right, let's take a look at the night lighting now. So you can see here in the park. Ooh, what was that? Oh, that's the light from my airplane. I'm like, what are those two flashy lights? Let's turn those off. There we go. So now just kind of taking a look at the parking lot area at night. You have all these little uh, lamps lit up, which is very nice. And then all these lights on the terminal as well. Looking very nice. You can see there in the general aviation area, those three you have 3D lights there. You can kind of see them. If I move back and forth, you can see those lights. And shining there on the ramp I wonder if this sign is supposed to be lit at night though that's a good question that's what I'd be curious to see but wow beautiful lighting done here at night and I love this roadway as well the way this all this brick was done looks really really cool and here we are on the inside of the terminal You can just see it's very bright in here. I'm not very good at slewing around, so once I have prepared version 3, I can use my my new guy to walk around. I'm going to have to get somebody to put a Air Daily X t-shirt on him. If anybody's up for that, I need my own little guy with an Air Daily X t-shirt. That's going to be really freaking cool. So nice plants again, looking at the inside at night. All these lights. I guess it doesn't rain down here too much. So I guess rain is not really all that much of a problem. But uh, like I said earlier, it would have been nice to see some uh, immigration guards here, some people waiting in the waiting areas perhaps. Would have been nice to see. And just getting a good overall look now of the uh, the air side of the terminal at night definitely no complaints with the lighting I'm just every time you know this guy makes another airport I just get more and more excited I mean his work is just getting better and better and better with each release it is imp it's impressive with Daytona you know the area was just incredibly huge huge coverage area um, and you know a large airport that was definitely the largest project he's ever done so it doesn't quite have the level of detail that this airport does obviously when you're doing something smaller you can take the time to do all those little things like the little plants and the little rocks and the little artworks and don't get me wrong Daytona is quite detailed 
um, for the size of um, scenery that it is. So don't don't get me wrong at all. But here he's 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 done a level of detail implementation that's greater than I think anything that he's ever done. You can see the kind of the shine on the ramp there a little bit in the sunset. You can kind of see that on the ramp areas here. Take a look at the edge lighting. And uh, let's take a look at the runway lighting as well. We'll uh, go underneath the approach. And look, there's animated birds. I did not see these earlier. Well, now they're gone. Oh, wait, where'd they go? There they are. You can see there's some animated birds here. I'll try to zoom in on them here. There they are. So you've got some animated birds as well. I didn't even notice those. I guess that's that's included as part of the animations um, in that control panel, um, as discussed earlier. And uh, we'll go ahead and move forward and take a look at the approach lights on the runway. <clears throat> Caution, jet blasts and departing and arriving aircraft can... <laughs> Let's try that again. Caution, jet blasts of departing and arriving aircraft can, can, can cause severe physical harm, resulting in injury, bodily harm, and or death. <clears throat> I need water. Uh, really liking the way the, uh, the night lights are done here. All custom night lighting. You can see the clouds kind of affect the lights whenever there's clouds. So you can kind of see those clouds are kind of getting in the way a little bit. Um, let me see here really quickly. I'll just clear those out so you can kind of see that a little bit more clearly. Without those clouds getting away. So you have some nice approach lights. All custom, of course. And look at the way these lights are done here, too, on the runway approach. Very nicely done. Very nice. So you've got nice center lights there. You've got your edge lights. Overall, just an amazingly well done scenery. Very, very impressed. Very, very impressed. So... Let's head over to the Aerosoft product page because this is brought to you by Aerosoft. And thank you to Aerosoft for providing uh, the copy for this live stream preview. Let's take a look at uh, what this is going to cost, shall we? And I should probably switch to desktop mode. And let's see, what is the price here? They actually didn't put it on their uh, main page. I'm really surprised. I might do a stream of that Mega Airport Zurich that was recently released. I can tell you in advance I wasn't impressed. I was not. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good scenery. So here it is. 17 bucks. 17 bucks and you get that the one, but this is a cool one too. see where is it is it this one Our, the Blue Angel, Echelon Parade. nope not that one hang on not that one either I didn't have an ice cream cone I should have because it was freaking hot out there check this out
There's a Breitling team there, you can see. Awesome stuff. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> so there you go, as promised. You hear me like a kid at the air show on Sunday. And look at these kids covering their ears. What the hell's wrong with these kids? Covering their ears. These airplanes are too loud, mommy. Can you believe it? Why would you cover your ears? I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. All right, guys. Well, that will pretty much close today's stream well i think it's been a couple hours huh i think i heard that uh, this thing cut out a couple times it did actually the stream did cut out a couple times but anyway i will have this up on youtube uh in a few hours uh for anyone that's missed it or couldn't join earlier on hope you guys had a good time make sure you head out and grab aerosol's bonera it is an amazing amazing work and like i said before i really really hope to see um this developer do more stuff like this um, definitely he's got a good knack for tropical locations and certainly there's a lot of need in the Caribbean not sure if he's gonna be heading back to Norway or if he'll uh, consider doing more stuff in the Americas I guess time will tell I imagine it shouldn't be too many more months before we start seeing previews of his next work so want to tip my hat off again to your Ireland with another job well done <laughs> For those of you guys helping out on the stream and keeping the trolls at bay, I really do appreciate it. As always, as you all know, it's not easy work getting up every day and keeping your favorite news site running for nothing in return. So I'm so glad that you guys help out as well. Always, always uh, just hugely appreciate it. Um, please do know that. And um, I've got some more stuff coming up. Again, I have... Um, the uh the long years falls bard or something like that um coming up from kdm and i might try to get to that tomorrow in prepared version three uh, once again i'll be staying up really late tonight to hurry up and get my copy and get that all set up so i can start streaming in that as soon as possible so do stay tuned for that stuff and in the meantime i'm gonna go ahead and sign off thanks again so much everyone for uh for tuning in and uh, we will see you next time. Take care, everybody. And uh, hey, enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.